is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we are back with another episode of lions latest going through the latest detroit lions news and today we have another coaching hiring to discuss so let's get it started welcome ready to our video glad you guys are here and yes we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, man, it is officially the offseason. The coaching moves continue. And in our last video, we discussed, not our last video, but our last coaching video, I think it was our last Lions Latest video, we discussed the Lions' new defensive line coach from the Tennessee Titans that was hired, who also worked at this year's Senior Bowl. Now, I won't go into that at all in today's video because, the, one, that video is just too darn long and on its own. Okay, way too long to make. It took my entire day. So if you guys want to go check that out, go for it. All right, there's a lot of detail, probably too much detail in that video. I'm going to do my best to really dive all that back here today however I definitely dove into this hiring it's why I'm not here to break the news because if I did that I would owe absolutely nothing about this guy and I would just be telling you about a name and I would be like okay that's about all I got that's I mean that's all I got but that's not the case. I wanted to dive into this a little bit, get a little background, kind of understand why this was taking place. Because honestly, when I first saw this news, maybe this did this to you as well, but it took me off guard. I was like, did I miss something? Did T Tanner Ingstrand take a job somewhere and he's getting hired as the pass game coordinator? I'm like, what's going on here? But as of what we know so far, that is not the case. It's not going to affect our current pass game coordinator, Tanner Ingstrand. But keep an eye on the fact that, you know, there has been interest out there around the league about him being an offensive coordinator, and it makes a ton of sense. I thought maybe he'd be next OC if Ben Johnson were to leave, but Ben Johnson not leave. He's back. So I would keep an eye on that name still. However, it was reported today that the Detroit Lions are hiring Deshaya Townsend. I'm saying his name right. I apologize if I'm not. You guys know I'll get it right. It's my first time, honestly, not seeing the name, so I apologize if I'm saying this incorrectly. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Deshaya Townsend, a 48-year-old defensive-minded coach, is now added to the Lions coaching staff. Now, quick little, how does this fit into the Lions before we start to dive into this, play, this player? I say player. He's a former player, of course. That's like the Lions' entire coaching staff. But before we dive into that side of things, how does he fit into everything here? Well, it is being reported that he's being hired as our pass game coordinator coordinator and specifically will focus on the defensive side of the ball so he won't like you know impact the status of Tanner Ingstrand again as of now is what we know because Tanner Ingstrand is our offensive pass game coordinator now last season the Lions actually didn't have this position where he's coming from with the Jacksonville Jaguars and the reason that he took that Jaguars job is because it was a larger role coming from Jacksonville as their cornerbacks coach slash pass game coordinator which again now he's our defensive pass game coordinator for the Lions with who is currently on their staff two names to keep an eye on here first off we have Brian Duker who is our defensive backs coach he initially was here 2022 his focus was with the safety position but of course he was elevated and now he's working with the defensive backs this past season so we do still have our defensive back coach as you know the NFL season is coming to a close however Super Bowl 58 is next weekend and if you want some inside info and picks advice from award-winning sports bettors before the big game go over to bet us picks and predictions channel on YouTube or hit the link in the description they have you covered you're gonna want to hit and be successful on those final bets that you place for the last game of the 2023 2024 NFL season and as you can see right here Super Bowl preview and prediction so go check that out click that top link but also with bet us who's partnered with us throughout this NFL season, they have an amazing new promotion. They'll give you a 125% bonus, not only on your first deposit, but on your first three deposits. That's right, first three deposits with the promo code JOIN125 or JOIN125. Plus, they'll give you a 10% gambler's insurance for your net losses if you were active every six months. All right, so again, that link will also be in the description. Shout out to Bay US. Now let's get back to the video. However, again, that was Brian Duker who started off primarily working with the safety position. Obviously, the safety position over the last couple of years has been really darn good for the Lions, okay? If anything, it's like, yo, we are really deep at the safety position. However, the cornerback position last year, Dre Bly, first time coaching in the NFL, was our cornerbacks coach. So he is the name to really keep an eye on with this if something potentially happens there. I don't think that this hiring means that something has to go down there with Dre Bly. You can keep Dre Bly around, but you're definitely bringing in someone with much more experience, and I think clearly the emphasis here is on that cornerback position and wanting to get development out of that. Number one, Cam Sutton, right, who's obviously signed a three-year deal, someone I think they want to continue to get improvement out of. Talk about Deshea here in a second, but he most recently worked with a guy like Darius Williams, who was from the LA Rams, not the biggest cornerback necessarily, but he was very effective, especially in some of the off-coverage, zone coverage.
coverage. We'll talk about kind of that schematic fit. And then, of course, if the Lions go out and add a premium type of cornerback this offseason, whether that be draft, free agency, they really haven't done that yet outside of the Cam Sutton signing and the Ify Melipanu draft pick in the first season, but now he's a safety. Lions haven't really put a huge investment into that cornerback position, but this could absolutely be the year that they do that because, again, if you compare it to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where DeShea is now coming from, they had Tyson Campbell, who was a top pick in the second round, as well as Darius Williams, who they paired him along with, and I think the Lions could be looking for their Tyson Campbell type of cornerback, the guy that they feel like can get up and press, press on the boundary side of the field, which we saw Tyson Campbell do, but also still play a lot of zone coverage defensively. Side note, I think this is what the Lions were also potentially looking for out of Emmanuel Mosley, that he could fit kind of this mold. Doesn't mean it has to be the biggest corner, but physicality at the line, and can also play zone. Lions could be looking for that piece this offseason. That would make a ton of sense for me. I think I'd be looking for that this offseason. Of course, they're going to want someone to kind of bring that player along, but he's also worked with a lot of young cornerbacks as well in his past, so it makes sense that the Lions would want just someone that could be a part of putting that thing together because it does feel like there's going to be a pretty significant addition to that cornerback room, at least one player this offseason. So with that being said, let's do a quick little overview. Who is this guy and where is he from? Well, Deshea Townsend is a former cornerback in the NFL. Played from 19 1998 to 2009 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a two-time Super Bowl winner, 21 interceptions, three touchdowns, 112 passes defended, and then he finished his career with one season with the Indianapolis Colts in 2010. Then he got immediately into the coaching ranks, and he started off at the NFL level with the Arizona Cardinals as an assistant defensive backs coach from 2011 to 2012, then at the college level, Mississippi State, 2013 to 2015, then back to the NFL with the Tennessee Titans as their defensive backs coach for a few seasons seasons before landing with the New York Giants as an assistant defensive backs coach and then most recently which was one of the longer 10 years landed with the Chicago Bears as their secondary coach and we'll kind of talk about the weird connection that is there with the Chicago Bears and then finally most recently like I touched on cornerbacks coach slash pass game coordinator for Doug Peterson and also the Jacksonville Jaguar. There was some very interesting connections here recently for DeShea and some of the jobs that he did land. You start with a team like the Chicago Bears, and when you looked at what the Chicago Bears did the year before he landed there, maybe the best defense, one of the best defenses in football, specifically in the back end with some of the playmakers that they already had. And you ask yourself, like, like why did they move off their defensive backs coach? Like, really, like, I asked myself that, like, why did he become the secondary coach? Because they were doing a really good job already. However, their secondary coach at the time was Ed Donatel maybe a familiar name, he went to the Minnesota Vikings to become their defensive coordinator. So he ended up stepping into that same defensive or secondary coach position for the Chicago Bears. Now, what's interesting about that connection would be where his next stop was, most recently with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Landing that position with the Jacksonville Jaguars isn't initially where a lot of people thought he was going to go. A lot of the thought was he was going to land with the Minnesota Vikings as their defensive backs coach there and follow Ed Donatel, who was, of course, in a lot of his time under a guy like Vic Fangio, so he comes from that tree. They thought he was going to follow Ed Donatel over there with the Minnesota Vikings, who had now become the defensive coordinator. However, he ultimately decided to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars due to a change of heart, but it was reported that a big part of that was that it was just a larger role, and that's what the Jacksonville Jaguars had to offer as their pass game coordinator. So it's a weird little connection that I think is in there. To start with the Arizona Cardinals, there was also connections there as well as a player, so that makes sense. But let's just start off here, and we'll kind of go back to when he was with the Tennessee Titans first, and this is something that I kind of throw up on the screen here. I will for each of the next stops with him and just some of the statistics, the way that guys kind of progress through the years uh, as defensive backs, PFF grades, and also kind of their completion rate that they also allowed. Other connection, and this one isn't directly to Dan Campbell, but it kind of is, Lou Anarumo. So again, a name that, again, may sound familiar. Lou Anarumo, if you look at 2018, when he became the assistant defensive backs coach, right? You're seeing him as a defensive backs coach, defensive backs coach, and then he becomes the assistant. Well, Lou Anarumo was the defensive backs coach at the time for the New York Giants. And the reason that that's significant is because he has a connection directly with Dan Campbell as he worked with the Miami Dolphins when Dan Campbell became the interim head coach. And actually, when Dan Campbell became the interim head coach and they named an interim defensive coordinator, Lou and Arumo became the interim defensive coordinator. And of course, you're also getting a guy here that's worked under Lou and Arumo. So there's a connection there to Dan Campbell. It's kind of in a weird way with the Miami Dolphins, but there is a connection there in a sense with Dan Campbell. Now, when we move forward and you move on to the most recent stops, we start off with a team like the Chicago Bears. And again, you look at the statistics here and you're going to see that statistically speaking, obviously the numbers as a pass defense alone definitely regressed each season. Now, one thing that I think is important to note here, and it was again kind of specified 
identified with the Jacksonville Jaguars where at his first media, you know, press conference, he was asked like, hey, what's your role going to be here? And he said that, you know, my job is to oversee the secondary. Now, when we do split up, they'll go with the safeties. I'll go with the corners, essentially. But my job is to over the secondary. So his primary focus was still on that cornerback position. And I think that's kind of what, again, the Lions are hiring him for seemingly is to have a veteran that can continue to work with corners. We know Glenn is a former cornerback as well, but he's a defensive coordinator. So a guy that can specifically just work with them, even if that keeps Dre Bly in place, who's young in terms of the coaching thing at the NFL level, that would make a ton of sense for the Lions. But you can see with the Chicago Bears, what I think does stand out here is statistics aren't necessarily great year by year. Again, a big portion of this, similar to the defensive line video that we did, is the personnel that you have. The NFL is different from college in that sense mainly. Now it's a little bit different because college has so many moving parts. But as we know in the NFL, it's so important about the personnel that you have. And then obviously the cast base plays a lot of an impact in that and then the development. You kind of restart a little bit with some of the youth. Also when you have coaching staff changes. And again, here defensively when he stepped into this defense, this was a top tier defense. And it was like, not it wasn't that the guy got fired. He just took a promotion elsewhere. So they wanted to go get another defensive backs coach. And he was able to fill that role. And honestly, he's been poking very well from everything that I've seen. You know, whether that was a former teammate that on a podcast said that he's extremely savvy and he's very relatable to the guys. He is definitely a player's coach. And he said it's only a matter of time before this guy lands a defensive coordinator job. And I do think it's interesting, even though it's the initial report, is that once again, this is the Lions essentially seemingly hiring someone to kind of like a very similar type of role. Now, obviously, he could have more responsibilities on his plate, but in terms of just a job title, it seems like a very similar job title that he's going to have in Detroit here. If I, it could be even maybe a little bit less in terms of his job title that he's landing in Detroit versus what he had in Jacksonville. And that's what we saw at defensive line as well with their most recent hiring is that the Lions have been able to do this, right? They've loaded up their coaching staff in terms of guys want to coach here. They want to be a part of this staff. And at the same time, you're seeing guys that aren't just always taking promotions to come to Detroit. They're also taking seemingly lateral job title positions and still joining the Lions, which I think speaks a ton about what the Lions have going on here in terms of their culture and what guys want to be a part of. We've seen this since Dan Campbell got here, that guys are willing to do things like this. Whether this was Anthony Lynn saying, I was going to take a year off, but I'm going to coach for you. Like that kind of thing the Lions have had that and outside of the connections and the culture that you're a part of I gotta believe it's also probably pretty enticing that there could be a potential defensive coordinator opportunity relatively soon here if the season goes well again Glenn continues to interview if he lands a position not saying he'd be the first guy up necessarily again that could be a Kelvin Shepard it could be anybody but if they perform really well in the back and they take those steps whether that's here or elsewhere there could potentially be a real defensive coordinator opening now, when you focus on kind of the statistics again, they don't look great here, and that is very clear. However, focusing on the cornerback position, I think what stands out, obviously you see a lot of the turnover that took place year over year. You also see connections. A guy like Kendall Vilder, for example, who was drafted by the Chicago Bears in a day three pick, he has worked with Kendall Vilder directly. So if the Lions bring back Vilder, there's a guy that he's worked with. So, I mean, look, I, I, I'm not mad against bringing back Kendall Vilder, especially if it's on a minimum deal, but just something to kind of keep an eye on. But you can see how the transition kind of took place. Fuller, still there, but then the safety position kind of had some turnover over you bring in ha, ha Clinton Dix for a season there you can see the cornerback position started to kind of get new pieces into the mix a little bit here by the time you get to 2020 you now have Jalen Johnson the second round pick who is now thrown into the mix and I think it does stand out 15 passes defense in 2020 as a rookie that's that's pretty incredible that he was a part of that also Duke Shelley kind of enters the mix this is his second year there but as a round six pick where he's actually finding now getting some playing time had a solid season according to PFF 58.8 coverage grade a pass defended the safety position now real turnover to Sean Gibson is now there. You still have Jackson and then you move into his final season with the Chicago Bears and you can see second year for Jalen Johnson another strong season. See the pass defense the stats down a little bit here. He had a couple more games played in 2021 but he also did get his first interception so that's worth a note. Again we also point out Kendall Vilder. This would have been his second season. We started to see a, a much bigger role from Kendall Vilder so there was clear turnover especially with day three picks like Duke Shelley Kendall Vilder now being thrown into the mix and there's been great examples that have been specifically brought up. You know there was an example that was brought up in this season where on December 20th. They were playing the Minnesota Vikings, and this was that, you know, COVID year, so they were out all their starters in the back end, and they held Kirk Cousins to 87 passing yards in that football game. And here's the statistics from that game. Now, of course, Chicago lost. They scored nine points in this game. And we know that's a factor, too. Like, yeah, offensively, you have to be productive. Four sacks in this one as well. I think this is a perfect opportunity to point out a guy like Thomas Graham, who's not on this list. This is a round six pick, right, in 2021 under this defensive backs coach at the time, the secondary coach. And he posted a 90.6 coverage grade, five receptions on 10 targets. He had three pass breakups in this game alone. And the next season, as a guy that was looked at as a potential starter, he plays 37 snaps, has a hamstring injury. He ends up getting cut by the team and all of a sudden he hasn't played a snap since that time. 
So again, personnel is so key. And unless you're like following a team individually, game after game, it's easy as a fan to just look at the numbers and be like, yeah, this guy's terrible. But it's a lot of that. It's personnel that comes into it. There's a lot of individual things that you don't really notice unless maybe you're following that team every single week. Freddie Burns is now into the mix. The safety position has changed. Eddie Jackson is getting a little bit older here. And Fulkin very highly of, like I said, from everything that I've seen in Pittsburgh, uh, again, according to his former teammate, Dick LeBeau had a play called Tight Drop DeShea that was named after DeShea that was named after DeShea Townsend. Dick LeBeau really liked him as a player. And he moved into his most recent stop here with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And again, I think what stands out is the development of kind of the youth, right? Before he gets there, you can see some of their top corners. And this was, again, when he was the cornerback coach. Again, like you said, he overlooked the secondary. So you can throw in Andre Sisco and some of the young guys that he worked with. Wingard as well at safety. Jenkins as well at safety. But really, I focused on the cornerback position here. And it's, it's about that development, right? And you can see Tyson Campbell came in. Pretty successful rookie season. In his second year, you can see, according to PFF, took a massive step 15 passes defended three interceptions also I think another big addition was of course Darius Williams the free agent addition 16 pass defended that was his career high at the time in his first season there with the Jacksonville Jaguars so it was kind of like a new revamped cornerback position you also throw in Griffin who clearly didn't play in a ton of games but he had four pass defended only five games played versus seven the year before that he got there right Trey Herndon continued to improve with the Jacksonville Jaguars then you move on to this most recent season and obviously they started to clean house there a little bit and he was actually let go I believe it was today and he was hired today so clearly he was not on the market long the Lions like had their eye on this guy like let's pick him up like this guy should not be available and you can see this past season again Darius Williams setting another career high in pass defended four interceptions as well now Tyson Campbell statistically seemingly took a little bit of a step back here also according to the PFF grades as well in fairness he did play and you know he missed six games so in fairness there was games that were still left out there Herndon continued to improve as well you also throw into another another young player Brown now into the mix as a second year seventh round pick he had a solid statistical season what really stands out to me is this right and I wanted to point out some of the individuals just that he's worked with kind of like we did with the defensive line video because I think that's key really stands out to me also is this schematically the fit seems to be pretty seamless here as well number one Jacksonville Jaguars like the Detroit Lions are a very aggressive defense this past season 30 percent blitz rate for, uh, from the Jacksonville Jaguars so you're like okay that makes sense Aaron Glenn and the Lions were 28.7 percent at 11 so they are both like kind of right there in terms of how much they like to blitz now from some of the film that I did watch because I just went through I wanted to go see a little bit of like what the defense actually looks like as I said they usually have kind of that boundary corner that is willing to press and a lot of times that's Tyson Campbell I think Lions want to find that piece that's able to do that but it's very clear in terms of what some of the things that they do schematically what they ask of their pieces how this makes sense and how the fit is there number one they're a very heavy zone team at one point they were top five in the league in terms of zone break towards the end of the season in the NFL versus man coverage they play a ton of zone lines to start the transition into that as well also a lot of cover three from what I took away is like okay yeah a lot of single eye safety a lot of rolling of safety a lot of cover three defensively which we saw again a lot for the Lions this past season but obviously they're not just a cover three defense there's flex Flexibility there. You saw quarters coverage. You saw cover two. What stuck out to me was the zone blitzing, and it was the inverted coverage, right? It was defensively blitzing out of zone, right? When it got into the red zone, hey, we want to play two deep, right? We're going to play two man. We're going to play quarters, but we're going to blitz. We'll bring extra defenders. And again, that's something Aaron Glenn has done. Well, that's a slot blitz linebacker. Having one less underneath zone defender has been a has been a theme for Aaron Glenn. Like bringing five rushers, one less underneath defender, underneath zone defender. It's been something that Glenn's done since he's got here. And Jacksonville also did that this past season as well. Again. And every time teams would get into the red zone, you saw a lot of two deep safeties. You'd still get your mix of man coverage, especially on third downs. A lot of cover one. Again, roll the safety down just like the Lions do as well. Leave their corners on the outside kind of on an island. And this is similar. You can see schematically some of the things that they also do similar, right? And a lot of teams do this. Number three, receiver goes vertical. Pass that off. You know, we'll take it underneath here. Safety can take it on the play. So a lot of that flexibility that the Lions also carry in terms of how they play defensively as well. I think schematically the fit seems pretty seamless here. It just seems to make a ton of sense that the Lions would like to bring in a guy that plays this, that's part of this kind of style of defense. Also a guy that has worked with young players like he has and been a part of kind of that developmental process as well. As I said, everything I've read, he's been spoken about really highly. Again, former player, been kind of recognized as a player coach as well, but specifically I feel like his focus would probably be on that cornerback position and wanting to get that development there. We know statistically the Lions have improved in terms of coverage. I mean, it really goes back to last year, middle way through the season when Jerry Jacobs got back, but I think the Lions are going to put a real big time investment potentially 
especially this offseason at the cornerback position. They already did in a way with Cam Sutton. They want that position to continue to grow and improve. And it feels like, you know, we're going to really start to get new pieces that are going to be thrown into that mix there as well. But plus, there's also like connections as well. There's a weird kind of connection to Dan Campbell. There's a connection to a Kendall Builder. Like there's former players that have also worked with him. And there's free agents, you know, I guess Jalen Johnson throwing that mix, guys like that, that are going to be available that, you know, the Lions could also be intrigued about on in the free agent market as well. That's what really stands out to me from what I've read on Desheo Townsend. I'm going to leave it right there. That way this video is not super long. Your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Prop, for watching, and I'm out.